all right what is up youtube welcome back to another anime live action video for you guys continuing my streak of how anime has in fact influenced hollywood live action films and cinema so today's video is going to be talking about a very interesting example of how the disney film atlantis copies nadia the secret of blue water which is an anime series that i feel like not a lot of people have heard about but they probably should have because it's made by the same director as neon gen this is Evangelion. But anyways, we got a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's get into it. Did Disney's Atlantis copy Nadia the Secret of Blue Water? Nadia the Secret of Blue Water premiered on Japanese TV on April 13th, 1990, 30 years ago today. Well, this article came out two years ago, so 32 years ago, technically. This sci-fi anime is noteworthy for a few things. It's one of the early works of Neon Genesis Evangelion director Hideki Anno and was inspired by a concept by Hayao Miyazaki. It helped put Studio Gainax, famous for Evangelion, Gurren Lagann, and Fully Cooley on the map. Many people argue Disney stole heavily from Nadia when crafting the 2001 animated feature Atlantis The Lost Empire. Similar to the rumors The Lion King stole from Kimba, The White Lion, however, while there are a remarkable amount of similarities between Nadia and Atlantis, did Disney really rip this anime off or did both draw from a common source of far older inspiration? Nadia The Secret of Blue Water takes place in an alternative version of 1889, where a 14-year-old girl named Nadia meets Jean, a young, free-thinking inventor. He is in possession of an enigmatic blue crystal, which draws the desire of jewel hunters all over the world. The two kids help each other escape, running into the explorer Captain Nemo and his submarine, the Nautilus. Soon, both the young kids and the jewel hunters pursuing them get caught up in a war with the aquatic lost city of Atlantis. Nadia and the crystal in her possession have enigmatic ties to the civilization, which will prove instrumental as Nadia and friends stand in the way of Atlantean general Gargoyle's path of conquest. The series is an adventure saga many at the time of its release compared to Hayao Miyazaki's Castle in the Sky. An unsurprising comparison, considering Hayao Miyazaki came up with the idea for Nadia in the late 70s before creating Castle in the Sky. The movie's characters were also designed by Yoshiyuki Sadamoto, who would rework Nadia's general design when creating Shinji Ikari. When Atlantis The Lost Empire Empire released. Many compared Nadia to the Disney film. Both take place in an alternate past, center around a spirited, bright-eyed inventor, and feature a crew of jewel thieves joining forces on an expedition underwater and a blue crystal as a central point of importance and power. Comparisons are even more obvious when looking more deeply at the films. Their plot structures are similar. Both start on land transitioning to an American boat before descending underwater via submarine. Feature a patriarch captain, blonde second in command, bald black doctor, and a cast of international figures, and crews that combat a nautical creature, a squid-like monster in Nadia, and a mechanical lobster in Atlantis. Their versions of the Lost City also both exist in a large bubble of air at the bottom of the sea, and the crystal-wielding princess Kaida bears notable design similarities to Nadia. Of course, for every similarity, there were drastic differences, while some, like what sort of sea monster attacks the submarine and the exact year both take place, aren't drastic enough to disprove the rip-off theory, others are more significant. Though Kaida and Nadia have similarities, Kaida enters her story much later than Nadia does, and while Nadia and Atlantis feature thieves trying to steal the enigmatic jewels worn around both characters' necks, the Nadia at the start of the anime, while the ones in Atlantis aren't revealed to be thieves at all until the third act. This leads to the most drastic difference between the two stories. In Nadia, the main antagonist Gargoyle is from Atlantis. In Atlantis, I just realized this article doesn't really differentiate the movie Atlantis and the actual city Atlantis in the Nadia anime series, so I'll try my best to differentiate the two. In Nadia, the main antagonist Gargoyle is from Atlantis the city. In Atlantis, the movie, the villain is Captain Rourke. The city in the movie Atlantis, oh my god. This core difference, it results in a drastically different conflict where rather than trying to stop Atlantis from destroying the surface world, Milo is forced to stop people from the surface from destroying Atlantis. Ultimately, the plot of Atlantis, The Lost Empire, has less to do with an anime from 30 years ago than a novel from 150 years ago. In 1869, science fiction writer Jules Verne wrote 20,000 Leagues Years Under the Sea, one of the first great science fiction novels. The book follows Captain Nemo, the captain of the submarine, the Nautilus, and his international crew in to the depths of the sea where they fight a gigantic squid and even stumble upon the ruins of Atlantis. If this sounds familiar, it's by design 
Nadia The Secret of Blue Water started as Hayao Miyazaki's adaptation of Jules Verne's body of work. Miyazaki's series was originally going to be titled Around the World in 80 Days by Sea, where two children would stumble onto Captain Nemo's adventure from 20,000 Leagues. Disney previously adapted 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in the 1950s and drew heavily from Verne's work when creating Atlantis The Lost Empire. Many of the common elements between Nadia and Atlantis, the movie, are proof both drew heavily from the far older works of Verne, not each other. There are still enough distinctive commonalities between Nadia and Atlantis the movie, that it's possible the latter drew inspiration from the former, most notably the similarities between Nadia and Kaida, as well as their blue crystal. However, with so many elements shared between them and Verne's old adventure novel, it's impossible to say whether Disney truly ripped Gainax off. So yeah, there you have it. There's a lot kind of going into this, with Disney taking a lot from Nadia, but then Nadia also taking from Hayao Miyazaki, but then Hayao Miyazaki also taking from Jules Verne. It's just, it's a lot. But I definitely wanted to get all the facts straight and I think this article did a great job of doing that. So yeah, in this case, I guess you can't really say that Disney just straight up ripped off an anime because, well, it's a little bit more to it than that. But hopefully you guys have actually watched the video to the end to know all the little details. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out a ton. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see y'all in the next video.